Days of concern is lived by a young Islander who is allegedly a victim of identity theft on social networks. According to what he told Tele Isla's news, his name and image in photos would be used by unscrupulous people to threaten and extort residents of the department. Wilson Harris Henry is a young racial man who is very concerned about the situation he is currently experiencing. According to the young man, his name and image has been and is being used to harass, extort and threat people in the island through fake Facebook and WhatsApp profiles, leading to him being branded as a dishonest person. Where some people and don't know that who make on Facebook and then they use my picture them and so and then start to the right one girl and they beg them what this photo and things like that. But the girl when no oh, some friend I send it to one of my friend and one of my friend make I know show me the capture of them and so and that's why I get for find out. That same day I gone and I put in one of the knows because I really don't know what that the people in plan. So I put in one of the man and things like that. But the people in continue extortion people and they beg them money and things like that. One day I come from work and I find one girl wait for me home. My first time I ever see the girl, the girl can find me, say, me when they beg him one amount of money and so through phone. I tell the girl, I don't know you. The girl say, no, you don't know me now and this and the other. He also points out that he has already filled complaints with the relevant authorities to carry out the respective investigation and get to those responsible for this act. At this moment, what worries the islander the most is that they attempt against his life. They write one boy and tell the boy said they want to kill him, then they put, tell the boy said they want to kill him and so. And well, the boy went send around to friend him and so, and well, I went got look, say one of them know me and then contact me and so, and well, that's why I get to know a, a gun and me and the boy talk and so on. Well, we, we come on to a, 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 a conclusion. I tell him, say, I explain him, say, I know me and well, we talk good. But what am I, what I afraid for, I say, I don't know who else the people eh, they write. I don't know what type of people. I don't know if I can get attacked by a road because I don't know what they tell him. So that, that way I afraid for. Harris Henry, who currently works as a maritime inspector for the port captaincy, states that he does not know with what intention they use his personal information to make these threats. He invites the community of the island not to fall into these farce, not to accept requests on social network with his photograph, and to denounce to the authorities in case they communicate with them. The Coast Guard Station of San Andreas detected and located 36 illegal migrants in the territory of the archipelago who were waiting for boats to be transported to Central America. In shelters, 36 illegal migrants of Dominican and Venezuelan nationality, including minors, were found on the Fisherman's Island near Albuquerque, 24 nautical miles south of San Andres, where they were waiting for boats to be transported illegally to Central America. La estación de guardacostas de San Andres. The Coast Guard Station of San Andres was transported with the staff of Migration Colombia to Albuquerque's Key and Fisherman Island, where 36 people were found, of which 14 were minors who were trying to move in a boat to Central America. This staff was placed at the disposal of the competent authorities in order to safeguard their lives. The migrants were taken to San Andres, where they received hydration, food, and medical attention from the port and military health service. While they were placed at the disposal of Migration Colombia, the National Navy revealed the modus operandi that the migrant smuggling gangs were using. This is the type of boat they are offered. The migrants were deceived by being offered sturdy boats with shares and safety measures. But when they arrived on the island of San Andres, they found 32-foot boats with a single engine to ride waves of 2 to 3 meters at sea. We also find this type of boat 26 feet with a single engine where they make people sit on the floor and ride the weather and the waves of the sea. The archipelago of San Andres has become one of the transit routes for migrant smuggling boats. So far this year, 12 Cubans were detected illegally trying to leave San Andres for Central America, as well as 17 Venezuelan migrants in a boat in the southwest of the department. 
And in other news, in the facilities of the Coral Palace, the Secretary of Mobility, who is currently serving as the acting governor, Luis Viloria, appointed the new special registrar for the department, Maximiliano Tiberio Newball Escalona, a liar specializing in procedural law who comes to the public office as a guarantor of transparency and legality process on the island of San Andres. The Office of the Controller General of the Republic will enable, as of Friday, August 12, the Contact Center 199, a line that seeks to encourage social control of public resources. No citizen will have line 199, a new tool to file complaints, receive guidance, submit petition, claims and suggestion in an agile, timely, comprehensive and centralized manner. The launching of the line 199 will take place tomorrow, Friday at 8.30 a.m. This will be a new communication channel that will allow Colombians to contact this control agency free of charge to report facts that go against the proper use of the public resources. Colombians now have a new resource to watch over the correct use of the resources that belong to everyone. Line 99 is part of the broad ecosystem of technological tools of the controller office, such as Control App, an application enabled to contact the entity at any time, 365 days a year. These two channels allow citizens committed to social control of public resources to be in contact with the CGR from any cloud, Tigo, and or Movistar cell phone. Personalized attention, call filtering through initial menus, and the immediate routing of the required agency are some of the services offered by this line 199 for citizens, a fundamental axis in the fight against corruption. The video clip competition of our regional channel Tele Islas is coming to an end. We tell you when will be the closing program will be held. The results and the decision of the jury of the clip fest are ready. Next August 21st, you will have the opportunity to know the winners through the screen of Tele Islas. A total of eight video clips are competing in this version of the clip fest. And out of booting already closed, you can still see the work of the participants on the YouTube channel of the regional channel Tele Islas. The Leisla video clip competition get to the end. The jury, they don't take a decision. So, you no can't miss it. The 21 of August at 6 p.m., you no have to sit down right there and enjoy the ceremony awards from Clipfest 2022 in a E4 version. And from today until August 30th, the Health Secretariat will advance vaccination strategies within schools of the archipelago. Continuing with the National Vaccination Plan Against COVID-19 in the department, the Health Secretariat has again implemented immunization campaigns inside the educational institutions to all children from three years of age and older who have parental authorization. We have coordination with um, the Secretaryship of Education and with the schools and with the, and with the, um, in the hospital that is vaccinating um, by the schools them. We start today by the different schools them. We have around 15 schools program um, to continue the vaccination program against COVID. The idea is that we have our children protected. We know that plenty of situations come up and um, we can have different sicknesses coming up. We have the viruela simica coming up. And along with COVID, it will be um, a situation that maybe we would, 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 we wouldn't we wouldn't able to control. So we are trying to have this schedule complete for our children. We have the different vaccines for the ages them, according to the ages that are in the schools. We ask the parents to collaborate, to verify the cards for the children to see if they have the vaccine. And it's necessary for us to protect our children. We know that we can have serious consequences after we have these sickness that we can prevent with vaccines. Although the vaccination rates of COVID-19 are currently low in the department, the Health Secretariat indicates that these campaigns seek to avoid a resurgence within the academic institutions. I know it's time for Sport News with Victor Fusalva. <laughs> Hello, here are the best sports of the island. And this time with the new process of the selected volleyball teams that are preparing for future national tournaments. Under the guidance of Professor Hasir Davis, 
and with a new process, the selected volleyball teams of the archipelago department are preparing to participate in the upcoming national competitions and the next interclub tournament to be held in upcoming months. El proceso de, de voleibol apenas comienza, apenas. The volleyball process has just begun. We have just eight months with all the children we have today. It is a very new process and we are giving it all the interest for the future national or inter-club games, which is what we are aiming at for this year. Well, we have a long-term invitation. There are already five months left for that. It is December 17th in the city of Barranquilla, which is a very good inter-club game. But due to the pandemic, we are taking it up again. In the archipelago, there are four clubs. The most active is the school of Karasai and the sports club Los Pulpitos. And we practically make that selected team between both. We are also betting on the intercollegiate games because thanks to God last year, we did very well. We were national champions with the infantile selection and that category repeats. So the expectations are great again to repeat that championship. With discipline and perseverance, we will continue to prepare ourselves to make a great performance for the department in the next national competitions, said Coach Davis. And in another scenario, tennis is a sport that also wants to be present in the archipelago. A sport that is very well known worldwide and that has already begun to take its first step in the insular department. Looking for help to organize the league, Professor Rafael Gomez James continues his training process with some young people and children of the department. We talked to Coach Rafael Gomez who told us. Bueno, el, el proceso formativo en San Andrés... So the volleyball process has just begun. We have just eight months with all the children we have today. It is a very new process and we are giving it all the interest for the future national or inter-club games, which is what we are aiming at for this year. Well, we have a long-term invitation. There are already five months left for that. It is December 17th in the city of Barranquilla, which is a very good inter-club game. But due to the pandemic, we are taking it up again. In the archipelago, there are four clubs. The most active is the school of Karasai and the sports club Los Pulpitos. And we practically make that selected team between both. We are also betting on the intercollegiate games because thanks to God last year, we did very well. We were national champions with the infantile selection and that category repeats. So the expectations are great again to repeat that championship. How good it would be to see more children on the road to practice the sport of tennis with the help of the sports secretariat and the departmental government. This is what was stated by Rafael Gomez James. And with tennis, we end it tonight, but we will see you on another broadcast. We continue with Lisa. Thank you, Victor, and this was all for tonight. We see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. with more Tele Islas news. Good night.